Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rose, and welcome to episode 251 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all are in an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe to your favorite and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations, and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. Big games out last week were Contra Operation Galaga, Dune Imperium, and Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. The games coming out this week include Lightyear Frontier, MLB The Show 24, Master Maker 3D Ultimate, Alone in the Dark, Power of 10, Final Fantasy 14, House Flipper 2, Crimson, Iconi Island and Earthlock Adventure, Scott Whispers in the Search of Mr. Fumbleclaw, Stunt Paradise, Tram Simulator Urban Transit, Dark Gems, and Dragon's Dogma 2. Now onto last week's biggest news stories, and in a slower week, we do have five to go over. Number one. Minecraft now has a subscription service. Ryan Zindale at IGN writes, Microsoft has released a monthly subscription service just for Minecraft, called the Marketplace Pass. Revealed on the Minecraft website, the Marketplace Pass costs $3.99 a month and grants Bedrock players access to a catalog of more than 150 different content packs for Minecraft Marketplace, which is refreshed every month. Players won't need to pay for the Marketplace Pass to continue playing Minecraft as normal. The Marketplace is Minecraft's hub for creator-made content such as skin packs, adventure worlds, survival spawns, mashups, texture packs, and other downloadable content. Minecraft will handpick 150 or more of the best of these to include in the Marketplace Pass, and also give players a new set of character creator items each month. Quote, some are story driven, others combat focused, a fool will make you look speedy parkour pro or an unbeatable puzzle master, while others magically make your blocky world look different, end quote, Microsoft said. Quote, every single one of them is created by your brilliant community of creators, and they're to add new play styles and variety to your Minecraft sessions, end quote. So I think this is cool. I mean, I imagine if you're the hardcore Minecraft player and you're already spending money on this content, why not subscribe and get some other content just for quote unquote free as part of that fixed cost? Otherwise, I don't see this as egregious. It's only $3.99. They could have been way worse. However, I'm not in the Minecraft community, so really can't speak to it. Number two, Multiverses returns in May, nearly a year after going offline. Michael McWhorter at Polygon writes, Fighting game Multiverses, the Smash Bros. like that merged the worlds of DC Comics, Game of Thrones, Looney Tunes, and other Warner Bros. owned properties, will relaunch on May 28th. Developer Player First Games announced on Monday. Multiverses has been offline since June 2023 when the developer took the game down to retool it. Tony Hunya, co-founder and CEO of Player First, said in a video announcement that Multiverses has been rebuilt in Unreal Engine 5, which will give the platform fighter a new and improved look. The team has also, quote, rebuilt the game from the ground up to support our new netcode, end quote. When you said, and that players can expect, quote, pinpoint accuracy and consistent game performance no matter what platform you are playing on, end quote. Player First is also adding some really exciting brand new personalities to the roster, when you said, but did not provide specifics on which Warner Bros. owned characters will come to multiverses later this year. The studio is also adding a brand new PvE mode, which when you said will give players unique rewards. Multiverses launched in July 2022, in which Warner Brothers and developer Player First Games called an open beta. In March 2023, the studio announced it was pulling the game from digital stores and taking it offline. At the time, it was the first official update that the studio had provided since November 2022, when Player First brought Marvin the Martian and Season 2 content to the game. In the following months, players expressed discontent at the cadence of new characters and other additions. Over the past 8 months, Multiverse's players have had access to only the game's offline modes, the training room aka the lab, and local matches. The studio promised Multiverse's would return, however, as it developed new characters, maps, and modes, as well as an updated netcode and matchmaking improvements. Multiverses will become available again for the platforms it was previously released for, PS4, PS5, Windows PC, Xbox One, and Series X and S. This is good that this game is coming back, but one of the weirdest stories that we've seen in the industry in the last 5-10 to 10 years. This game was in open beta for so long, and then they just straight up took the game down after people had bought seasonal content. That seemed a little insidious, and I did not like that. Hopefully the game is here to stay, and it seemed like a decent amount of people actually liked it. To me, nothing's going to overthrow Super Smash Brothers. Just what good fun that is. Number three, Saber Interactive splits from Embracer, taking 38 video game projects with it. Wesley Impool at IGN writes, Saber Interactive has split from Embracer with at least 38 ongoing development game projects among the divided assets and over 3,000 staff moving across. 
However, a number of key studios remain at Embracer, including Tripwire, Aspire, and Beamdog. The deal is initially valued at $247 million with a buyer named as Beacon Interactive, a company set up and controlled by Sabre Interactive co-founder Matthew Karch. As a result, Embracer has seized all operations in Russia. It appears jobs were secured as part of the deal. There are a number of interesting points in the deal. For example, Beacon Interactive has the right option to acquire Metro Developer 4A Games and Pinball Developers and Studios for a fixed price within a certain amount of time. According to Bloomberg reporter Jason Trier, Beacon Interactive has indeed decided to buy both studios. Long-term license and publishing rights to all current and future PC and console games in the Metro franchise are held within the Embracer Operative Group, PlayOn, Embracer said. The studios and their owned or licensed IP now a part of Beacon Interactive are all Sabre branded studios, Nimble Giant with Star Trek Infinite, Digic 3D Animation Studio, Sabre Interactive Incorporated Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2 Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic Remake, Fractured Byte Support Studio, Sandbox Strategies PR Agency, Madhead Games Scars Above, Slipgate Kingpin Reloaded and Gravid, New World Interactive Insurgency Day of Infamy Insurgency Standstorm, 3D Realms with Iron Fury, Embracer will retain the following studios and companies. 34 Big Things, Readout, Shiver, Support, 4A Games, Metro, Snapshot, Phoenix Point, and Chaos Reborn, Aspire, Tomb Raider 133 Remastered, starring Lara Croft, the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, Tripwire, Killing 4, Beamdog, Myth Force, Tuxedo Labs, Teardown, Demiurge, Sega Heroes, and Zen Studios, Pinball Effects, and Zen Pinball. While Saber Interactive has split from Embracer, Embracer itself retains future publishing rights to 14 Saber games already in the works, including two joint projects with Beacon Interactive. They are the next AAA game from Metro Developer 4A Games, an unannounced concept phase AAA game, a previously announced AAA game based on a major license, this is either Warhammer 40,000 Space Spring 2 or Star Wars and Knights of Old Republic Remake, both currently in developer at Saber Interactive, a new AAA multiplayer shooter based on a controlled IP, a new AA game based on a Smoady IP, a new AA game from 34 Big Things based on a known IP, Killing 4 3, Teardown Ongoing Development, and the full upcoming pipeline and back catalog from Zen Studios, Aspire, and Tripwire. Embracer's group financial struggles began following the collapse of a $2 billion deal reportedly with Saudi government funded company Savvy Games Group. The Swedish firm has since come under fire for the sweeping cuts it has already made, including the closure of wrong running Saints Row Maker Volition. You know, over the last, what, five years or so, when Embracer started to purchase every IP under the sun and every studio imaginable that you really haven't heard of besides some of the big ones like Saber, like Gearbox, we all know that this was going to come and crash and burn. It was just way too unwieldy, which, you know, people also think with Xbox and how many studios they now own, but Embracer was on a completely other insane level. So... Hopefully the games that are worth continuing in development continue to be under development. Personally from this list, give me that Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake as soon as possible. That will quickly be my number one most anticipated game when we actually have some concrete information with it. Number four, System Shock's remake is coming to consoles in May. Jordan Midler at VGC writes, The remake of System Shock will be released on PS5, Series X and S, and Xbox One in May. Developer Night Dive Studios has confirmed the game released on May 21st. System Shock was originally developed by Looking Glass Studios in 1994, directed by Doug Church and produced by Warren Spector. It was a highly influential title that went on to inspire games like Bioshock and Prey, both considered spiritual successors. Quote, the System Shock remake combines the cult gameplay of the iconic original game with all new HD visuals, updated controls, an overhauled interface, and all new sounds and music, end quote, according to a press release. I wanted to highlight this because from a 1994 game, at least the trailer, the visuals look pretty good. It seems like it runs pretty well and plays well. I am personally interested in this game, although I have no idea when I'm ever going to get to it because of how influential it was for Bioshock, which was one of my favorite franchises of all time. And the fact that Ken Levine came from working on these games who did lead Bioshock. So a lot of good history there. Number five, PUBG gets destructible environments, a move to Unreal Engine 5 and more in 2024. Was the game pool at IGN writes. PUBG is set to get several new features throughout 2024 that promise to change the game significantly. The free-to-play Battle Royale, which remains one of the most played games across console and PC via Steam six years after launch, is getting destructible environments, a move to Unreal Engine 5, user-generated content, and more over the course of this year. Developer Crafton also signaled new collaborations. These have become a big part of PUBG recently, improvements to matchmaking, and the promise of increased anti-cheat measures. PUBG launched on PC via Steam in March 2017 and went on to become one of the biggest games in the world. 
In January 2018, PUBG set Steam's all-time peak concurrent figure for a single game with an incredible 3.2 million players online at the same time. Since then, PUBG has launched across consoles and on mobile, the latter of which has seen over 1 billion downloads. While the console and PC version of PUBG is far from the heights set during the game's early years, it remains hugely popular with hundreds of thousands of people playing on Steam at any given point. PUBG, oh boy oh boy. The idea of Battle Royale still is, but at the onset was so interesting to me and I loved it and I just wanted any game that had a Battle Royale mode and PUBG obviously was the world leader in that. I eventually had to tell myself that this game was trash. I just could not get over the gunplay and the gameplay. I understand it's more of a hardcore shooter, it just did not work for me. When that game came to console, I was so insanely excited to get all the friends on, and boy did that run terrible, and boy was that really, really hard to play. Maybe, just maybe, the moves on Real Engine 5 will improve some of that, but I doubt it. PUBG will probably never be a thing I really play ever again. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and let's talk about how a little game on another platform seems to be doing. Yes, maybe it's a new story, but I wanted to include it as a fun fact because some people are going to think it's pretty fun, and a lot of people on Twitter especially might think that it's unfun. So, Sea of Thieves is currently at the top of the pre-order charts on numerous PlayStation 5 digital storefronts. Noted by Benji Sales on Twitter, the premium edition of the game currently has the number one slot on the PS5 console store's pre-order page in the US when sorted by best selling. The standard edition is also in the top 10, sitting in 5th. So what have we learned here? It seems like Sea of Thieves at least is going to be a big hit on Sony platforms. Not a surprise, it's a huge game with a huge community behind it. And if this game does really well, hmm. Well, you can bet your bottom dollar that Xbox is not going to stop with these four games. There are going to be more and more coming as the years go by. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covering around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share with your friends, leave a review, and follow all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I did hop around a number of different games while I'm always playing Marvel Snap in the background. I did play a little more Final Fantasy VII, the original. I did restart the game on Xbox so I can have that game in my gym where I also have an Xbox, and then mobile on the Logitech G Cloud, which I'm enjoying it there. Continuing to play The Last of Us Part Two Remastered with my wife, an incredible experience, obviously. And then I also played about two hours of Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Gotta get that game replay in before the big one, as long as that hopefully hits the date in May. My name is Brian Rose. You can follow me on Xbox at Rose93. Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.